Hello, everyone, and welcome to Designing Magic Cards Live here at SCGCon Winter 2018. I am Jeremy Knoll, your moderator, and today with me I have Gavin Verhey. Hello, everybody. I have designed a magic card before. <laughs> and Mike Turian. Uh, hello. I also have designed a magic card before. <laughs> Just a couple. Right, so, so Mike, you are the lead designer of Future Sight and World Wake and Morning Tide and what other sets? Uh, Scars of Mirrodin and Conflux were the, the five sets that I was the lead designer of. And also, like, created the original Plane Chase product. Uh, and, and more. What about you? I, well, and I mean, also, we're talking about just lead designs here. Like, we've both been on numerous, numerous design teams. We've made, probably made hundreds of magic cards, thousands maybe, who knows. Um, I was lead designer of Battle Bond, Commander 2017, Commander 2018, some of really cool stuff that's not out yet. Um, been on tons and tons and tons of teams, like um, Oath of the Gatewatch, Conspiracy 1, Conspiracy 2, um, Gate Crash. I don't know, I could just keep naming them, but <laughs> it's kind of, kind of just self-indulgent at a point. The point is, Mike and I have made a lot of Magic the Gathering cards. Many of your favorites, many that you probably won with and also lost to. It's a very odd feeling to lose your own Magic cards, I gotta say, Mike. Yeah, well, yeah, that, yeah that's unfortunate when that happens, especially when I've made Jace and Tarmog Life. It happens uh, uh, <laughs> fairly often if, if my opponents are playing one of those. Yeah, what was the thing that happened with Tarmog Life? It was three mana and then you chopped the mana off? Well, so yeah, it was, it was three mana but what happened was, is we were working on Planeswalkers at the time, and Planeswalkers were originally scheduled to be in Future Sight. That's when, you know, it, it was about the future, and we knew we were going to be really blowing them out uh, upcoming. And so uh, we were, were messing around with, uh, I think it was Garrick originally, and so he was in the set, he was out of the set, and Tarmogoyf happened to be the card that was sort of uh, alternating with him. So when ultimately we decided to put... Uh, uh, the Planeswalkers into Lorwyn, we brought Tarmogoyf back into Future Sight, but in that sort of back and forth, he lost a mana and gained a toughness, so that was a pretty big uh, pretty big upgrade for Tarmogoyf. Eh, you know, it worked out fine. Yeah, he's, a, no, he's, a, no problem. he's a greed creature. You could terror him. You could path exile him. <laughs> you know, how, how good could he be? Well, it turns out pretty good. Uh, I mean, originally, right, the way Planeswalkers worked was kind of like sagas, right? Those were the early Planeswalkers where they were just programmatic. They did thing one, thing two, thing three, back to thing one. Yeah, they, yeah, they were very super close to sagas, except for the fact that they would rotate back to the beginning, unlike sagas where you go through them and then they're they're done. Right, so Garrick was like, uh, step one, untap some lands. Step two, make a beast. Step three, overrun. Back to untap lands. But if, but if your creatures died before you got to overrun, he's like, oops, casting overrun anyway. Yeah, right. So. That, that, to us at the time, that felt kind of silly, although really it turned out with just some small tweaks, it really worked out well for Sagas. So. Yeah. And anyway, enough about those old magic cards. <laughs> yeah, let's make some new magic cards. All right, so Who wants to make some new magic cards? <laughs> yes. Woo! So, so we are going to be going through a few questions that were submitted beforehand, uh, but... What we'd like to do as well is get your uh, your input from these as well. So we've got our directors over here, and they've got some index cards. Uh, if you want to wait until we've gone through like one or two, just to get an idea of what we're looking for. But um, if you'd like to go over there now, what we're looking for are things like uh, give us like a color, a card type, uh, maybe some flavor, like what world you'd like to see on this on, or things like. Um, like if you have a, it, there's like a problem with a set, like, hey, we need a blue uncommon that does this, or, you know, to fill out the draft or something like that. Or, or, or we're trying to like beat a deck, like, oh, Delver's yeah. too strong, how do we add something to fight that off? Yeah, or yeah, how do, how do you add a, a card into a next set that is designed to beat this card in standard or in, in modern upcoming or something like that? So if you'd like to do that, they're right over here, you can start writing those down. And if you just want to do like one thing, like, we just want to write a color or a, a car type or a world onto each of those, and we'll just like grab bag it too. That would be pretty fun as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of going to these restrictions, we have to deal with these all the time at Wizards. It's pretty seldom that we make a magic card that's just, hey, make any card you want, type type it out. Usually it's, okay, it's got to be a blue card, or we're trying to make a certain character, or hey, we're on Zendikar this time around. What are the mechanics of Zendikar we can use, you know? Is it, we can't just go put living weapon on every single card because that's not on every plane. So <laughs> Right? Although I'm sure, I'm sure some people might try <laughs> if we let them. All right, so the first one we're going to go over, I think this one's a pretty good one. Uh, how would you just start to design a green instant spell that would be good against control decks? 
green instant spell that's good against control decks. Well, the first thing we would, of course, ask is what format is it for? Let's just say standard. That seems reasonable, Mike. To so, sounds good to let's me. Let's pretend in this hypothetical fantasy world we're trying to make a green instant that's good against control deck. So, you know, look at the current standard format. You've got these, like, Teferi decks roll, rolling around, and then these, like, mono green, like, stompy decks rolling around. So maybe it's, like, for this mono green stompy deck, one of these, like, Galta, Galta style decks to fight off Teferi. Yeah, I mean, one of the go-to places for when, it, when I hear that card is talking about stopping counter spells. Not that that's really as, as prevalent in, in standard right now, but that's always, to me, where, you know, we always make this, oh, if, if you cast a blue spell on your opponent, if an opponent casts a, a blue spell on your turn, do X or Y. Like seed time, where you take yeah. another turn if they cast a blue spell. That's, that was always nice. Was End it, step factor fiction. Sounds it, great. Uh, was it Eyes of the Wizard? As well, the wise, right? Yeah, as well. yeah, 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 stuff, that, that, stuff like that. Stuff like that. It's funny, Mike. I go in a, in a similar but slightly different direction where I think about stuff that protects your creatures from board sweepers mm. because it's like, oh, what they're going to do is blow up. You're going like, to get all your creatures out, and then that jerky blue white mage is going to cast a wrath and blow up your board, and you're like, aha, I have heroic intervention or, or whatever the case might be. Right, right. Some, yeah, like giving them indestructible or, or removing them from play until end of turn. Right, so, something that protects your guys. Although it's funny because one of the, the traps we fall into is you think, hey, we're going to make this card and it's going to be really good against control. And then the card comes out and it's really good in control. Right. And you're like, wow, yeah, we should have thought about what the control deck would do with that card too. So that's, that's always something that uh, it's good to keep in mind is, oh, how is it actually helping the deck that it's intended to uh, prevent? So, so a thing with these kind of hate cards too is that Sometimes subtlety is, is not really where we want to go for. We tried really subtle hate cards, like, ooh, well, if you can figure it out, this is really good in this archetype. But sometimes it's just good to have, nope, this is super strong, it's the hammer, it's going to be really powerful, and it, it does a lot of things. Yeah, well, one, one older card that I, I felt like did that pretty well, and, and we've kind of revisited this trope before, is like the collar of the claw, right? Oh, it's a 2-2 two -two with flash. When it comes into play, you get a 2-2 two -two, uh, for every creature that... I think of yours that died this turn. Right, right. And so, you know, that's another place where it's like, oh, you cast a Wrath, great. I've just rebuilt my team instantly. Is that and, uh, and like I'm attacking. Fresh Meat, I believe, is another one? Right, fresh Meat's another one. There was an Eldrazi that might have done this, yeah. some Brood Watcher guy or something. I don't know. Right. Um, so what if, what if we make this, Mike, what if we're just super mean? And we make a card that is good against counter spells and board sweepers, combining oh. our two ideas. Wow, that sounds quite powerful. I like it. Yes, <laughs> excellent. It, it does not have a, uh, a rarity restriction, so yeah, you can, well, you can go nuts with it. We're making rares. Yeah. That, that, that sounds like <laughs> a rare to me. <laughs> yeah. Com commons are the hardest to make, by far. Making commons is super hard. You got, what do you mean? Like 1W22? That's, that's tough. <laughs> well, 1W31? Yeah. One. What one R one R two one poor 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 one R two one poor yeah he's, he's we, we actually good. we have one R uh, two two now right yeah we do yeah for sure um, okay so maybe something so an instant could could that be a creature with flash maybe but um, I'm thinking something like an instant creature that says your spells can't be countered and when it comes into play it somehow protects your creatures so you can flash out in response to a counter spell or you can you know ha flash it out to protect your creatures. Like you mean like like something like G instant creatures you control can't be countered this turn. Creatures are indestructible. Your you know some, I mean not to say that's a card, but but so, that, something that's like that. Thinking. Or or on a creature, so it it um, the indestructible even might be like this turn only, but the uncountable might be permanent. So it's like they wrath you. You're like bam, slam this down. Yeah, You're hosed. I, I, yeah, I was thinking something along, maybe something that comes back when a spell you control is countered. Ooh, right? I like, like that. Right, like just like oh, target creature you control becomes indestructible end of turn, and, and like you know plus one plus one or plus two plus two whenever a spell you control is countered, return this to your hand from your graveyard. Yeah, one nice thing about that direction, Mike, is that. It gives the card utility outside of just this one narrow matchup. Sometimes it's nice that these cards get into main decks, and having it be a pump spell as well as do this other stuff makes it so like it's not just dead on its own. If your hand is four of these, you're not just like, ah, oh, I can't do anything with this, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, this card's just good against you know spot removal uh, as well. So it's even though it might not be coming back against them, you know, being so cheap and being a pump spell it means you can use it in combat. You can use it against removal. Uh, and, and so it, it's really doing an awful lot. So, so you, something like target creature gets plus two, plus two till end of turn and becomes indestructible. And whenever a spell of yours is countered, return card name to your hand? Yeah, I, m I might even think about, I mean, it will be less good against uh, wrath effects, obviously, but uh, I mean, hexproof is another place that we, that we go in this 
right? Or, or Stroud, I suppose. But something that, you know, I mean, we really like hex proofing green, I think. Uh, although, I mean, we, we do indestructible also. Yeah, but if you're only targeting one creature, indestructible sounds about about right to me. Or hexproof and indestructible, frankly. Wow. Yeah, that I'm sounds, I'm generous. Yeah, that sounds pretty. For all all this for one mana, yeah. two mana, three mana, two two, two mana maybe a bigger boost. Yeah, well, and so this is where we you know we'd be talking about what format it's uh, uh, targeted at too, right? Like if we want this to impact modern, it's probably a one mana card. Where like for standard, I think I think it could do its job for two mana. Right, to me this sounds like a, suddenly an, an Infect combo card, right? Like, yeah. Pl pl like it's Vines of the Vastwood partially kicked um, right. For, right. for one mana. Yeah. And, this, and this is where we would normally go and talk with play design a little bit and be like, hey, what can we do here? What's reasonable? And at this point they'd probably be like, y'all are crazy. Stop talking about <laughs> this immediately. But they're not here today, so Mike and I can just do whatever we That's want. That's right, we get to run wild today. I mean, uh, Tom Ross is here. Great. Right. Yeah, former former play design. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 Recently well, former. He's overplaying Infect yeah, somewhere, yeah, so we're going to let him. He is overplaying Infect. He's, he always greenlights our Infect cards. <laughs> he, that, that's no problem. <laughs> He'd be like, that's great. Yeah, we'll that's print great. It. Can, we, right. can we get a plus four, plus four? Yeah, for just chance? print it. Just go, go, we go. go find a particular play designer of, hey, right? It's like, play right into your style. What do, what do you think this could cost? Right. And you put it in the file, and then, you know, more often than not, they discover it and, and change the cost. But what can you do? Sometimes they just add that mana back to Tarmogoyf, but sometimes they don't, and, and there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's actually, if it sounds like it's us versus them, it's not. It's a very like, mutual relationship. We want to make magic the best we can. We're not trying to slide these crazy cards by, or at least, at least I'm trying not to slide these crazy cards by. I can't speak for, I have no comment. for all of us. <laughs> um, okay, so, so G plus two plus two and indestructible. Whenever a spell you'll, of yours is countered, return this to your hand. Yeah, from, your graveyard, from your graveyard yeah. to your hand. Yeah, something yeah. like that. My, my gut says that the might we might end up doing something else with the countered part, like whenever something or a spell is countered, return it to your hand, so it's not just super narrow. But you know, I think that's a great place to start. We put it into a set, start testing it, and see what happens. Yeah, sounds like a fun card. Protects your Galta, which is nice. Yeah, for right. sure. Yeah, yeah, you get to. Yeah, and also one of the things I like about it too is, as a finisher, like you're going to be holding it and you're going to be attacking them, and they're going to be coming down to two life. And so you're like, oh, do I, oh, like. Have they been holding their removal for the moment I go in for the kill? And, you know, I, I, I can see some pretty fun gameplay there, too. Right, right. It's sort of the old Stonewood Invocation thing, right? I learned a lot about when to cast my removal spells with Stonewood Invocation. That's the four mana, plus five, plus five, and hexproof split second card. Because, you you know, it, I always like, oh, well, you, you should cast removal at the last possible time. And, I, and I, you know, they would attack, and I'd be like, great, Doomblade your guy. And they're like, actually, take five more damage, my guy's not dead. Right. And you're like, oops. And you can't respond to this. Right. So right. That, so that's the day I learned maybe I should start casting Doomblade on my turn. It's like the it's like the brain exploding meme where it's like level one, like Doomblade the creature on their turn, level two, Doomblade it on, on your turn, and then there's probably some other levels someone in the chat will figure out. <laughs> probably level three is next. I'd... Yeah, I would guess. <laughs> anyway, what one card down, making magic cards so easy. Boom. So so easy. So easy, say. no yeah, problem. Well and then at this point in the process we'd you know, it, it, it would be in the file and the creative, this was really where the creative team would uh, come into play, right? Like they'd, they'd be talking about, oh, what does it mean to represent that in magic? What should it be named? And uh, you know, what should, what should the art description be? And, and right, because what we've created is a pretty functional car that we designed around gameplay. And, and that's often what we do. Uh, sometimes, however, it's sort of flipped on its head where the creative of the card comes first, like when we're making a legendary creature. Uh, and then we're building around that. Right, there's kind of top-down and bottom-up design, and top-down is where we come up with the flavorful concept and then design a card to that, and bottom-up is what Mike and I just did, where we had like a hole we needed to fill, and then it's creative's job to kind of figure out what that card means. And often these kind of weirdo designs end up with creative scratching their brain, like, okay, how can we make this actually less flavorful sense? Yeah, but they do a great job of that. I'm always, I'm always impressed. Yeah. A classic one is always the creature that gains flying. What is a creature that, that can gain flying, right? It's like, well, it's flying sometimes and not flying other times. Right, like, do, do its wings only work, like, at night? Is that what's going on? Like, what's happening? Right, does it have a weird chariot? Anyway, yeah. there's more magic cards to be made. <laughs> Jeremy. Also, if any of these cards happen to appear in future sets, purely coincidental. <laughs> All right, our next one is from Emily J. Sampson. It's a pretty simple description because all they sent in was, Bant Bird Tribal. Mm. And I know that this is something that uh, Bird Tribal has been pretty popular amongst Commander players. I know that Jonathan Suarez from Commander Versus does have his Birds of War deck, but it is just 
blue-white because it only has Kangi as its leader. So can we design around something like that with, with, with advanced legendary or maybe something like that? Yes, we can. Absolutely. I, I think, you know, although Shua didn't ask for it, I think we should make it a legendary creature so it can command a commander deck. That, that, that's a big thing we think about these days is... Like, it's funny, because in gameplay terms, Legendary is more or less pure downside. Like, you yeah. ignoring things like Cast Down. It's just bad. It just means you play fewer in your deck, and then you get blown up. But actually, because of Commander, it's just this tremendous upside. Making things Legendary is really relevant. And so if we're trying to make a, a theme work in a, in a set that we make, having it have a Legendary Commander is really important. That's why I made Najila, the War the Warblade, when I was working on um, Battle. Battle Bond, because... I wanted there to be a five-color warrior deck you in Commander, and lo and behold, that card is, is quite popular. Yes, so <laughs> very popular card. So Bant, Bant Bird Commander. All right, so blue, white, green, bird, legendary creature. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it flies. And if it flies, yeah, th this one's a no-brainer. Birds in our game fly. Not, a, not, a, not one of those you were just talking about where sometimes it does? It, it's no whippoorwill, no, I'll put no, it that way. not at all. <laughs> so, so the thing to think about here is, of course, we look at the setting and try and figure out what the mechanics of the setting were and what the bird tribal thing was trying to do. But imagining like a commander deck where, say you're having a, doing a, imagine if we chose bird as C, in C17, right? And we had done a, oh, a instead, instead of cat, you're getting rid of cat? Oh, uh, or let's see, you know, dragons, People hate dragons. Dragons are now birds. Dragons are now birds. <laughs> okay. um, we're doing a bird deck here instead. We can kind of do generic things with this. Uh, you know, a big question for me is, what does a bird tribal deck need? Like, what kind of effect is, is it missing? Well, yeah, so one of the, I mean, the thing that I feel like it has a lot of is I feel like it has a lot of bird tokens, right? There's, like, uh, I think, oh, yeah. like, ordered migration. and I mean, just, like, tons and tons of cards that make bird tokens. Although, actually, with your deck the other day, I was making uh, Pegasus, with the, uh, was it Storm, oh, Storm Herd? Yeah, yeah, I think it made 20 plus Pegasus. But in this case, you make a lot of bird tokens, but, like, I, I mean, to me, I feel like something that's like, mo like bird creature oriented is definitely the direction to go. Well, if you're going to make a bunch of tokens, you can always go with the classic wide bonus of birds you control get plus one, plus one. I mean, that's a yeah. pretty safe thing. Although, right. we've actually gone away from that a little bit in recent years, just because uh, in Commander, on, on Legendary Creatures, isn't, that's not that strong of a bonus, because you have 40 life, attacking isn't the strongest thing you could be doing, you know? Right, um, right. Well, I mean, I, I feel like with birds, it, it's like in Commander, too, it's just like, are you going like low casting cost of, oh, it comes out early and starts giving you value right away? Or do you sort of go, oh, hey, this is at m more towards the top of my curve? Wh which direction do you think we should be going here? I like like a nice four or five mana-ish creature here. You get a few birds out, and then you slam this, this down, you know? Mm, yeah. Um, another thing for us to be thinking about, and we'll get to the back to this in a second, too, is it's Bant. It's green, white, and blue. So it has to have elements of all three colors in there somewhere. We can't just make it a mono-white card because, you know, it has to have those three colors somewhere on the card. Right, right. And there's already, like, I think Avon Brigadier is the... Right. Yeah. It, although I don't know if that's legendary. I don't think it's legendary. Yeah, I, isn't it? I think yeah, it might be. We'll, we'll find out later. But in, in in any case, it's already to me. It's already something that's pumping your birds. Right. If you built, I think it pumps birds and soldiers. If my memory serves me right. Um, so yeah, I, I think staying away from just plus one plus one here would probably be probably be good. Well, you know what's great in Commander. So Commander is basically about two things. If you boil it down, it's about drawing cards and playing lands. And we are in Bant colors. And you make a lot of tokens. So what about whenever a bird you control enters the battlefield, whenever a bird you control attacks, draw a card. What about what about yeah? I, I like I like this. I like this. What about if it revealed the top card of your library, and if it, if it's a land, put it into play. Something oh, like calling oracle. Yeah, like calling or oracle, right? Or if I it's mean, a land or a bird, put it into play. Oh, a land or a bird. Wow. Yeah, that sounds like that could be pretty sick, right? You just go turn five, this bird lord. Just like you cast ordered migration or something, and you're just like. It, it, so, do you think that the card should go in the graveyard otherwise, or where should it, like, should, or do you just keep like if you fail, you just have it sit on top, right? Probably, like you probably put it on the bottom, right? Or put it well. But the problem with putting it on the bottom is it's just like I feel like you're going to be doing it awful an awful lot, yeah. Right? Like you built this bird deck, you're just going to be dumping birds into play, and so like. To me, flipping it into the graveyard is pretty fast, or leaving it on top is pretty fast, or putting it in your hand. But on the bottom, like, to, like the whole lifting up of your library, putting it on, the, like, it just takes that extra time that it's not the end of the world, but uh, when I see you doing it an awful lot, it definitely, it adds up.
Well, we don't want to leave it on top because if you're getting a bunch from your tokens, like having five triggers and having them all miss because right. there's a non non land on top or whatever. Um, the first thing for me is should it be ETB or attack. So if it's attacks, you don't have the chain problem, right? Because um, right now what I'm worried about is you you have so many birds in your deck. You like play a bird, flip a bird, get another trigger. Like you just keep you get a bajillion birds, which right. is maybe flavorful. I don't know. They do congregate. I mean, um, when I look up in the sky. I see a bajillion birds, right? Like, especially in, in Renton in the fall, I'm like, what is going on? Like, it is, it is like the movie, The Birds. I'm, I'm scared. Birds of war. Birds of war, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I, I think that, I mean, talking about if we're designing it for Commander, I think the come into play is nice, but maybe it should, there should be an extra mana cost associated with it. Yeah. Maybe that's another way to keep it from going crazy. I was thinking about that, although that's pretty bad with tokens, because you make five tokens at once or something with order migration, you're not going to have a lot of mana up to, to pay for it. Right. Yeah, you're missing out on that. That's for sure. Hmm. Tricky. Well, let's make the broken version. Yeah, then, broken version. Then play, de play design will fix it later for, after a play test. <laughs> Got it. So, so it's whenever a bird comes into play, uh, reveal the top card of your library, if it's a land or a bird, put it into play untapped. Yeah. And then other, otherwise put it in the graveyard? I, I say put it into your graveyard. In your yeah. graveyard? Wow, so, that oh, sounds... Yeah, yeah that, that sounds like a powerful magic card. Yeah, that is yeah a it powerful does. powerful magic card. That, 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 and you know what, too? Like, that's something that, like, oh, if it does come out that it's pretty bonkers at four or five mana, it's like you can bump it up to six, right? Where now it's like, yeah, it does start going nuts. But, I mean, magic cards at six and seven mana are just really powerful. Uh, especially in Commander. Right? Yeah. And, and also, keep in mind, you have to fill your deck with birds. So yeah, and land. Th th there's right, and lands. <laughs> so there is a downside to this. Um, so let's see, have we hit all three colors? Wait, but if you're building a bird deck, isn't filling your deck with birds an upside? Well, uh, sure, <laughs> sure. Um, we, have we hit all of our colors? What well, flies, so it's got the blue-white thing going on. It's getting lands out of your deck. That's green enough. Yeah, it's, uh, it's getting birds, which is you know probably blue white. I would say this fits all of our colors. Yeah, maybe we'll toss on vigilance to make sure that people understand it's white. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so uh, flying vigilance. Flying vigilance. Five mana, three three. But yeah, that sounds. Well, oh, three. I feel like what's two the, four. Two four or the yeah three four seems like a pretty. We've been doing that with the birds, right? Like the one that makes the bird token, uh, right? The raid, right? Yeah. Or the rock. I, the, yeah, the rock. Wingmate yeah. rock, yeah. Yeah, wingmate rock, thank you. Uh, yeah. All right, good enough to play test. Yeah, so 2, W, U, G, 3, 4, Flying Vigilance, and then Crazy Bird Trigger. Woo! The All right. The bird is the word on this one. Right. I love it. Coming, is... coming to you soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, or it, in like 18 months, 20 yeah. months. Yeah, that's, yeah that, that's one of the things that's always uh, funny is... Uh, you, you make these cards and you're super excited about them and you're telling people all of like, oh, here, here's this cool card I made and everyone's really excited. And then 18 months later, the card actually comes out and you <laughs> maybe remember that you created it. Right, you're like, who made that again? And just no one takes credit or right. everyone takes credit. Or Mark Rosewater takes credit. I, yeah. <laughs> I actually keep, I keep, no, he, he I keep my playtest cards around. I actually have a binder with me that I bring when I go spell slinging. You'll, you can find it over there later. Well, I've just play test cards that I made, so I, you can see them through their iterations, and you know, like I have like the first printing of Assassin's Trophy over there, where it was a little bit different, and yeah, all that good stuff. Anyway, anyway. more more not, more magic cards to be made. All right, so the next one comes from uh, Avi Miller. Uh, this one is uh, a little bit more specific towards limited. So a Simic, the guild, not just the color. So it would be a Ravnica card, uncommon, limited build around to me creature. And they say, rares tend to be splashy, but the uncommons are the cards that more often push you towards a specific color and limited. So can you design an uncommon creature that tells drafters they should really look to pick Simic when they see it in a pack? To me, this sounds like a thinly veiled way to try and get us to reveal the Simic mechanic <laughs> from, uh, from uh, Ravnica uh, Allegiance on, yeah. live on air. It's, we're not going to fall for it this time. <laughs> um, if you want some of these cards, I'm going to recommend waiting about two months, and then there'll be some in your set. Yeah, that's, that sounds like a good. So, so it's an uncommon limited build around me yeah. creature. Simic creature. Yeah. Yep. That's the. And, and I think for purposes of design, we should. It, it's always fun to try and design inside a world because those, those are very real constraints we get layered on us, right? Um, so maybe just we'll go with. Imagine if this card was in Gate Crash. Oh, in Gate Crash? Right. Okay. That's on, or, we that's can do, on or we can do Dissension. You want to do the Evolve? Is that, yeah, is Evolve that? is what I was thinking. Okay. Or we can yeah. do Dissension if you'd rather do Graft. Well, I mean, the, the, the card that immediately jumps to mind are, are the Guild Mages, right? Like, Guild Mages basically fall right into this category. I mean, we, of course, ha have made Guild Mages uh, 
uh, each time we've come back to Ravnica. But like, like when you look at the guild mage in the the guild, it basically is trying to be exactly this, right? So, but it, for the purposes of our our thing, I think we should try to do a second one because, uh, wait, I mean, guild mages are 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 very uh, structured, and I, yeah. and I think for this. Going, going out of the box is great. Yeah, for Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance, we actually made all 10 guild mages simultaneously, and so because we didn't want any of the effects to overlap. So, oh. uh, yeah, it, we, then we split them up. It was, it's a very hard process making guild mages 30, 31 through, uh, through 40, right. because we've used so many effects already. Yeah, I, I was impressed they found such a great structure for the name, right? Because just naming them becomes challenging yeah. in, in that same way. Um, but okay. yeah, so let's so, make something uh, are else. We, are we doing so? Are we doing an evolve guild? Uh, sorry, an evolve creature, or could be an evolve creature, or something that helps you evolve things out. For example, if it if it spent plus one plus one counters in some way, like allowed you to take counters off your creatures, then you could re be re evolving them. You know. Yeah, I, to me, one of the things that uh, is always appealing is like doubling the number of plus one plus one counters, Ooh. right? And so with evolve, of course, when you remove the one counter. Then and instead spits out two, which I think we actually also did in Dissension. I feel like there's a card that does that. I'd have to go back and look. I, I, can, think of, I can think of Novage and Sages, which is like remove two counters, draw a card. Yeah. Um, well, that, that's another right. That's another way we, you could talk about it. Is oh, you know, you're going to be putting out the the wall of many hats. I think was the playtest name. Yeah. The uh, the, the three mana five counter graft can attacker block creature. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And so ha ha having a way to remove counters from that. Uh, quickly is good. You know, another thing that you could think about doing is something that like just gets better when it has plus one plus one counters, right? That that's another way to say like, oh hey, we know you're going to be playing with a bunch of these evolved cards, so uh, maybe this guy, you know, when, whenever he has a plus one plus one counter on him, he gains flying. And then we have the the same creative uh, uh, challenge that you were talking about before. It's like, why did this plus one plus one counter give him flying? I don't know, but now he flies and he hits pretty hard. He's like welding wings onto his arm or something like that. Right. Those plus one plus one counters do do an awful lot. I like I like your original direction though of uh, of doubling counters. I mean that's always always fun. Helps evolve your guys. Though ironically, it gets them out of evolution range even quicker. But oh yeah, right for sure. Yeah, I mean that that's an interesting uh, uh, tension there for sure. Hmm. What about here? Here's a. This is probably just probably made it rare. This is a wonky tonk card. Um, whenever a, a plus one plus one counter would be put on another creature you're, you control, it's put on card name instead. Oh, what about? Uh, I think what about what about whenever I, I like that? Except maybe both the the creature and this guy get the counter. Oh, so whenever a, a counter is put on another creature you control, also put one on this creature. Yeah, and and then I think we'd That's have. Cool. Yeah, I think we'd have to template that one. So when you put the uh, the wall out, it wouldn't give my guy plus five plus five it would just give him uh plus one plus one and then of course there's the infinite problem right where if you have two of these they'll just go infinite with each other so yeah may maybe it should be the first time each turn or well, or at the end of turn or beginning of combat or something right yeah or, or you can once again do paying mana to have that oh um, yeah yeah you may pay you if you do right yeah i i i, I kind of like that I yeah mean, that, that sounds great and or, then normally limited to also get this to be attractive, you want to give it a good body, right? It's so like a three mana three three would be a fine thing to yeah. go for here. Right, three mana three three. Or two mana two two. Right, two mana two two. I could see like four mana three three with trample, right? Of like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, it's a little weak when you start him, but as he really builds up. Although I do like him coming out earlier rather than later. Maybe like two mana two two. Two mana two two, I like that. Yeah. It, it could and, fly or trample or even, whichever. Yeah, and then, and then I think making the mana payment uh, a hybrid mana, yeah, I, I think like that. sort of, because because that way, like you know, if you're splashing him, like oh sure, you cast him for BG, or sorry, UG, uh, but then he 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 pays off. Okay, so like two mana two two. Whenever a let's, let's say at the beginning, whenever a, a counter a plus one plus one counter is put on another creature you control, you may pay H. H is our like code for hybrid. Uh, if you do put a plus one plus one counter on this creature, yeah, I, I do like that. Although it does clash with the guild mages that are typically in the set, so that's yeah. something. Uh, we well, can do three mana three three. Yeah, three mana three three, or I mean, somewhere in there. I, I like or it. H one one. Uh. Oh, H one one. Yeah, I like that a it, lot. Like so, to me, that's a great build around uh, trigger, right? It, it's really hard to make one mana creatures in Ravnica sets because. 
in gold because you can't have like you need two colors of mana right to make a make a creature so a hybrid is the way we can cheat that and give you a one mana creature so whenever we have a good design it's somewhere we like to go to originally actually in guilds of ravnica and ravnica allegiance uh the guild mages were one mana we tried them out as hybrid mana uh one twos um death right shamans but that didn't stick that sounds pretty good. Yeah, they, they, a cycle of death rate shamans and it didn't work out. It's, it's fine. Don't <laughs> worry about it. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. How about H11? Whenever a plus one plus one counter is put on another creature you control, you may pay H. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. Yeah. I, you know, I really like that. I think it's really straightforward in terms of a build around. I also actually like that at one mana, it's like, yeah, you can play this in uh, non simic decks, right? Because. Both of its effects are hybrid. However, it really it really pays off when it's uh, when it's simic. But then it would work nice if there's some other plus one plus one counter granting uh, across the set. Maybe other colors are doing it differently, or there's cards like you know Gird for Battle, which uh, are just giving plus one plus one counters, and then it would work well. Uh, there also. And the thing I would watch here is, of course, it can move around on the mana curve. So we start at one mana, but if there's trouble there or it's not getting played enough, we could up the mana cost. And the other thing I would watch is that mana gate, like it's one mana to, to put the counter on it. It's possible that ends up being really restrictive because you want to like curve out in your Simic deck or something. And if that doesn't work out well enough, we could end up um, doing some kind of thing where it triggers at the beginning of combat or the end of your turn or something like that, just to help reduce that mana payment. But we don't want it, once again, to just be whenever whenever you do it, you get it for free, because then you, they just go infinite with each other. And that, that's on a one mana card especially, that's, yeah. a, that's Danger Town USA. Right. Yeah, I, you, could, I could see this guy on turn one, another copy on turn two, like, gird for battle. That's game. Right, that's, yeah. That's it. That, that's if you were to uh, remove that and, and remove, like, the cost on the ability to put the counter on it and just have it be at the beginning, would you also try and give it a little bit more of a push? Would you do something like at the beginning of combat, if another creature had received a plus one, plus one counter, uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on this and it gains flying until end of turn or something? Um, you could, although it, not on a hybrid one mana card because green can't gain flying. That's, That's right. the thing we have to think about a lot. Hybrid cards are hard to make because they have to do what both colors can do. So like, we couldn't give this base trample or base flying because blue doesn't get trample and green doesn't get flying. So that And blue-green has very little overlap space. Hexproof is basically the one thing we can do. And one mana hexproof creatures... Well, we, we all know how that yeah, goes. Yeah, right. All, all of a sudden, it's a build around me in a very different way. It's strictly better sl sl uh, slippery <laughs> boggle, so. Right, yeah, um, no, that, that would, yeah, I mean, I, if I, if, if you force us to move away from the mana solution, I would like to, I would think about at the end of the turn, yeah. uh, because then, like, even the turn you cast it, he could still uh, be getting bigger. I, I always tend to like beginning of combat on those triggers because it sucks that you make your guy bigger right after the chance you could attack with him, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. the less you get at that turn. Yeah, I'd be totally fine with that too. I think I uh, think that's a great, uh, a great thing. Cool. Okay, so keeping with Ravnica, uh, we do have another one that is uh, for Selesnya this time, and it just says a rare two mana instant. Um, so I, I think this is one of those things where you kind of have to think a lot about the. For that. There's so many things we could do. Selesnia, exactly. Selesnia, two mana, or two, not even two mana. Selesnia, rare instant. Yeah. Oh wait, wait, is it two mana instant or just Selesnia, rare instant? They they said Selesnia, rare, two mana instant. Oh, oh it's it two mana instant. instant. Yeah, well, I, I think the, I feel like the casting cost should be GW. I agree with that. Yeah, that seems like that seems like a, a, a great place to start. So what is what does Selesnia really want? Well, once it, it's, I always feel like you can, there's two kind of branches you can go here. You can do something that's good with tokens and going wide, or you can do something that's good with like protective, right? Kind of almost like the card we made earlier, where it like protects your tokens, protects your creatures once it, once it's out. Um, yeah. Well, I, I feel like let's go down. Let's talk about the creature route first, since we already made like a a pretty cool uh, protection card. Uh, yeah, for sure. Right. So, I mean, to me, the uh, the GW sorcery put a three three into play. Right, like that's kind of like baseline, right? Non-rare way we'd make this card. So we really need to sort of elevate it above that, in a way. Yeah, I mean, thanks, it's, it's, it's interesting, right? You've, so far in the audience, you've watched us like just go through a ton of cards and, and pretty quickly come up with what they're what they should be doing because the restrictions are there. And this is one where it's just so wide open; it's actually harder to design sometimes because 
Uh, well, it could be anything. Like I can think of a ton of different designs. It could be a boat. Restriction breeds creativity. Yes, Mr. Rosewater. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. No, yeah. It's, it totally. It's totally true. That's that's why we have themes and commander verses because when you say, "Hey, build whatever deck you want," you're just kind of stunned by the options. Yeah. So, right. I mean, to me, I mean, this card sounds totally bonkers, but like GW Instant, make a two-two populate. Right? Like, it's just like, oh, so baseline, you get four power for two mana. It just sounds so ridiculous, but definitely in the rare territory. But, oh, if you've made, an, uh, you know, if you've made a worm, then you're getting uh, uh, something, something really amazing on top of that. I agree with you, Mike. That does sound ridiculous. Right, because I think there was, what, like four mana, make a 1-1 one, one populate, 1-1 uh, one, one bird populate. <laughs> yeah, was, uh, at yeah, instant speed, yeah. Right, at instant speed. So my card is better basically on every axis, except the, 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 the knights wouldn't fly. I, I think it'd be fun to make one that's um, incur, like imagine it was in Guilds of Ravnica, you know? So we're using, Convoke is our mechanic, if we want to do something with that. Um, could do... Oh, so, Something that pumps your whole team up, too. Oh, like make it two two, and all your creatures get plus two plus two type thing. Well, it's straight to plus two plus two. I, well, that, I mean, you got you got to give you got to give a nice a nice hefty bonus here. I, but you, you could do choose one to make a two two, or all your creatures get plus two plus two. That's, yeah. Well, I mean, I was thinking oh, about the uncommon. charms, right? I mean, to me, then we're we're going down the charm route, right? Where like Slesnia charm is is kind of uh, uh, hitting on these different ways. But maybe what it is is maybe it's a choose two charm. Oh, right? a command? Yeah, yeah, it would be a command, right? Slesnia command. Like Dromoka's command, which is also a G-dub instant? Yeah, right. We, yeah, well, we've made a lot of crazy cards. How come, <laughs> we, how come we can't make my 2-2 two, two with Populate? That seems so sweet. Maybe, what if it was a 1-1? What if it was a one, one? Well, oh, that sounds fine to me. Yeah, G-dub, make a 1-1 one, one Populate. Right. That's, uh, it doesn't sound rare enough. It seems like it needs... Yeah, it needs a little more oomph. It needs a little more oomph. I don't... Yeah, maybe your guys, maybe and your team gets plus one, plus one. You just sort of like chain. It's like, oh, you can make two, two, two blockers at instant speed, or, but then they just become one ones. Or um, your tokens are indestructible this turn. Oh, your tokens are indestructible. Right, so it's kind of like raise the alarm, right? But you can get a worm instead of the second soldier. <laughs> no big. And, and you get indestructible guys. I think that, I mean, we're moving into rare territory there for sure. All right, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, I like <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. All right, so, so we have GW instant. Uh, Make a 1-1 one, one soldier, populate, creatures Creatures you control are indestructible this turn, or just token creatures? So I like token creatures. Token, token creatures are indestructible this turn? That's, this sounds like it could be good. Sounds like it's really good against control decks, right? They go for the sweeper, and you're like, actually, I have two more guys, and none of them die. Right, right. And you can use it as a finisher, and yeah, I, th I think there's something there. Yeah. And yeah. of course, we have the set would have to have Populate in it to print this. We couldn't have put this in Guilds of Ravnica. Right. Um, but notably, your 1-1 one, one token does not have lifelink, so that shows that it was from the, the original set. Maybe it's a sapperling or something. We, yeah, we just, yeah, we just got something. a, this card is ridiculous from Brad Nelson in the yeah. crowd. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure it it's is. ridiculous. I mean, that's, you know, <laughs> yeah, of, course, of course. I mean, that's, like, it's so, in terms of design, it's, if you find something that's exciting and fun, and then... It's it's easier to pull back from that than it is to take a card that is just bland and and push it forward. Right? Yeah, I mean, for, for, from our perspective, when we're designing, we want to make things that will get tried out in decks, and then play design can tweak and like push back on and find. And maybe it ends up being a modal card, right? Like you know, make a token and populate, or your stuff gets indestructible, or you know, honestly, we we never we almost never have holes that are just like two mana instant. Normally, it's like make you know you need a non creature. This could easily be a three mana card, right? Right. You know, very easily be a three mana card. I would, yeah. I would expect them to push on that a little bit. Yeah, that, that I mean, in fact, that was I feel like what was tripping us up a little bit in the beginning was the fact that it's like, hey, make it two mana instant, because immediately we're considering power level of the card rather than just the straight design. And right, so like my car, like make a two two uh, populate. Like there's clearly a casting cost where that works. And there's clearly a casting cost where it's you know more of an uncommon or more of a rare. But because we're already talking about casting cost from the get go, it sort of just puts us a little bit more in a box than uh, we'd typically be. Yeah, very seldom do we start with a mana cost and work from there. Normally we make all the other aspects and then talk about mana cost. Now sometimes there's rates to figure out or hey, where white needs another three drop or something like that. Um, but 
normally we'll actually ask people what they think a card should cost and tell them the card, and then they'll cost it. So. Yeah, I, I think it's one of the reasons that I feel like I've spent more time in a room discussing the power level of lands than than anything else during my time at, at Wizards. Like when I was, a, you know, a designer or developer, like because lands don't have that casting cost, right? You you just end up discussing like, okay what exact knobs need to be turned in order for this card to uh, succeed at a goal. Uh, and, and it's just way, way more challenging when you can't be adding mana to, uh, to, to make the card fair. All right, Jeremy. We made, right. we made four cards so far. Uh, can we get a fifth? This, this is the, uh, the last one of the submitted ones, and I, I believe you, see, you, you saw this one before and said it should be pretty interesting. Uh, Vincent Spezzo says... Top-down design of a white mythic legendary creature based off of Winston Churchill. I love it. I love everything about this. Hopefully, you know more about history than I do, Mike. <laughs> so, so immediately, so Winston Churchill. Uh, I, I play. I just want to say really fast. This is something that happens quite often. I mean, not with Winston Churchill, but like, hey, creative has an idea for a character. They're kind of like X, right? They're kind of like this personality. How, what would they do in Magic? And we have to come up with what the answer to that is. So this is actually a pretty common thing. Like, hey, like we work on a commander set, and the creative's like, oh, we really want to do a new Miri or something like that. Well, wh what does Miri do? Or we want, we want like a, a swashbuckler kind of character. We need a leader of a pirate legion for uh, when we're working on Ixalan. What can we do there? So although it sounds kind of ridiculous, can you make a top-down Winston Churchill? Yeah. This, is actually, this is actually very much in the range of a thing that we would talk about doing. So... Yeah. So anyway, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, that's a great point. Uh, so when I think about Winston Churchill, immediately I jump to uh, one of the other games that Wizards makes is uh, Axis and Allies. And I distinctly remember playing Axis and Allies with Mons Johnson, uh, famous for Mons Goblin Raiders, uh, and also just long, long time uh, magic and uh, magic contributor. And when playing Axis and Allies with him, he was uh, the United Kingdom, and immediately he goes to his desk, and I don't know why he has this at his desk, but it's a book of Winston Churchill quotes, and the entire time we are playing, like when it's not his turn basically, he just like interrupts the game with like, <laughs> you know, like uh, and begins into a Winston Churchill speech, and this was just going on, and Axis and Allies is a long game, so for like, for multiple hours, he's just like, you know, out of nowhere, just another... Another Churchill speech begins. So you're saying we should save room for flavor text? Yeah, we should definitely save some room for flavor text uh, because I feel like you know getting getting a, a pithy Churchill quote on there would be good. And also to me, it, it makes me think of you know a couple of things I think of when I think of Churchill is he, he was a great orator. Uh, he you know he was he was famous for his speeches uh, in Parliament and, and to Parliament and to the to the British people. Uh, and then also the fact that he was a wartime leader. Like th those two things to me, uh, and, and the wartime piece actually really plays well into magic. So, so I, I, think that, I think that this is possible. And we said he's a white mythic creature? Yeah. White legendary. I mean, I, 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 the big question to me is, is he white or white red? Oh, that's good. So does he represent, does, yeah, I, I feel like red is a great, a great addition to him, right? Like, cause he was also very much known as like a spitfire Right, just passionate leader, and to me that you know that embodies red, uh, red very well. Yeah, I mean, if, if we have some flexibility here, but it feels like Churchill would be white red. I don't know, it, it makes sense to me, or white with a red activated ability or something like that. We do the activated ability trick a lot um, because it helps it show up in more commander decks, right? Like, oh, it's a white card with a red activated ability. Suddenly, you can put it in your white red commander deck, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I mean. You know, white, red, and commander is also an interesting challenge because yeah. we're, we're often, you know, when you do, like, like you were mentioning before, combat is not as big of a part of commander as it is in, say, 1v1. Uh, and white and red are typically the more combat-oriented colors. So, well, well, you know what we could do here? We could try making a white, red commander that isn't about attacking because he's a great, he's a great speech giver, right? He's inspiring. Yeah. Maybe there's something there that ties into what commanders all about, which is drawing cards and playing lands. Probably not the playing lands part, but maybe the drawing cards part. Yeah, yeah, I could see, like, maybe something about, oh, whenever a, cre a creature you control attacks or deals damage or he gives he gives haste, like something, and then the, the, the reward is, you know, drawing a card or... I, I always like the Elkin Bottle thing in red, right, where you exile your top card and you can play it this turn. Yeah, that's yeah, absolutely. Nice. Yeah, that's always a great... Uh, I mean, once, a, once again, I think that... Uh, indestructible 
uh, has some has some appeal, right? Maybe, maybe when a creature you control dies, he that's when he gives his speech, right? Because I know the, the, <laughs> the, the British made a lot of sacrifices in in wartime, right? I was just watching um, Dunkirk and just seeing all the civilians just like sort of rally and and take their boats to save the troops was, uh, you know, I mean, really Churchill's doing. So I could see something like um, when a creature you control attacks or at the beginning of each post-combat main phase, if a creature you control attacked, exile your top card and you can play it this turn. Just kind of like, oh, you're, you're attacking? Well, let me tell, tell you about how awesome everything is and, you know, I'll help command you in that sense. Yeah, I, I think there's, there's definitely something there for sure. So, so what would that look like? Like how, so now one of the questions and one of the things we always uh, have to think about is as a human, Right? Like, what does that mean for his power toughness? Yeah, he's not going to be big. And it frankly right. sounds like he wants to come down early. So, like, three mana creature, two mana creature, something like that. Like, a two mana, two, two, or, or three mana, two, two, something in that Yeah, range. I like three mana, two, two. So, it comes down, like, maybe after you've played a creature or two, and then you get his bonus right away. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, I like that. Maybe, maybe he's a wall... You know, maybe oh, yeah, he's defender. a defender. He doesn't. It's true. The dude does not, not go into battle very much. Right. You're right. You weren't like, oh yeah, let me go see that action movie starring Winston Churchill. <laughs> right. I would watch it. I would say that. Yeah, I would watch does, that. It does sound pretty. Sweet, Winston though. Churchill, comma vampire hunter. <laughs> oh wow, that sounds like quite the franchise we're kicking <laughs> off right here. Uh, so okay, so we have a three mana two two defender. It's or, you could, or you, instead of defender is always kind of a lame o keyword. You could always just give him no power. Like oh, oh, three you mana mean, zero three or something. Three, three mana zero three. Yeah, I could see that for sure, right? And then he says, whenever a, at the end of combat, when it, if a creature you control attacks, uh, exile the top card of your library, you may uh, play it this turn. Yeah, that's nice. It leaves lots of room for flavor text. It does mean he can trigger himself. Does that sound reasonable if he gets in there for zero? Probably, right? It's like, it's like he's making a speech. <laughs> sure, I like it. I mean, that sounds, that sounds pretty fun. And, th and actually, maybe we should make it that he can play the card until your next turn. Right, and so that way, in like Commander, a lot of times oh, you're, right. fl you're flipping up an instant uh, that you know you're gonna want to wait on. But what do you think, lands or no? That's always the question. Can you uh, cast or play? Well, I mean, that's. I think without the, without talking to the color pie representatives, I like I like play because it just means, especially because you you have to pay for the spell, right? A lot of times cast without paying its mana cost is a reason that we uh, head towards cast. But here we're not going to do that, so um, if, we could, if we could get away with play, I'd prefer it. Okay. Yeah. Is, especially just to help out Commander. So now the next question, does this feel white enough to you? Uh, I, mean, well, it, I mean, he is it, a zero attacking. Three. Yeah, he's about, I mean, ex exiling temporarily is kind of sort of white. And I think, and I think about the, the easy tweaks we could put on it to make it white. Vigilance doesn't make a lot of sense. Lifeling doesn't make a lot, a lot of sense. <laughs> oh. First strike doesn't make a lot of sense. So none of those are, are helping. Yeah, that is, that is for sure. Maybe, maybe it should trigger when you attack with creatures and give those creatures a bonus. Right? Like something, right? Like, or like maybe just adding the line, uh, creatures you control have vigilance. Right? To, oh, sh I'm sure. Right? The first thing I thought was exalted. Exalted. Because he's, incur he's inspiring everyone yeah, else. Yeah, I like that. Right, I mean, I, you know, if this is a world that has exalted. That's yeah, exactly. Right. If it, I mean, it's a world that has exalted, but that's the inspiring everybody else. Right, it, it does. I mean, Exalted started out in Bant, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so that would make it a little, little challenging for Red. But yeah, I, I think that there's definitely something there. Maybe even just creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Yeah. Right? Just you know? something simple. Yeah, that makes sense. Right, or other creatures you control. So that way he's not pumping himself. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So wow, that, that's a powerful magic card. Okay, so he's one RW03. Uh, creatures you, other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever you attack with a creature at the end of combat, exile the top card of your library. You may play it until your next turn. Oh, whenever you attack with a creature or one or more creatures? One or more creatures. Oh, I, I wasn't trying to trigger it multiple times. So, it would oh, be so one, one or more. One or more. Okay. Right. Yeah, that sounds like a sweet and, card. And also, I actually like it triggering in at the beginning of combat better just because then there is... Like, if you do attack with Churchill and you, like... It, you know, you, you can flip up an instant and sort of, uh, you know... Clear, clear the way for him. So yeah. that, that way he can help out. You get that too. fun little, like, maybe I'll hit, maybe I'll hit a combat trick or burn spell or something, right? Right, right. Um, of course, now we, we both set out to make a non attacking red white commander, and of course, <laughs> as is tradition, we just ended up with a red white commander about attacking. But at least it draws you cards in the process, so that's right. something. Right, and I also I like that, like, 
if you have a creature that's about to attack, you can you can play him and then get get the trigger immediately. Mm -hmm. So you know, it, it, like one of the challenges in Commander is you play a card, and if it doesn't have haste and it doesn't have come into play effect, it just sits there waiting to you know for a wrath effect or or to be killed, and you know then you basically you felt good for a little while, but at the start of your next turn, your board's been reset, right? right? And so the fact that he can have an immediate effect and get an immediate return uh, definitely adds something to him. Sweet. So do we have any any good we, suggestions from we, the crowd? We do have two suggestions from the crowd, so I want to get through these kind of quicker. Okay. Because uh, we, we got just a couple minutes left here. So. All right. All right. Rapid fire mode. All right. The first one is, they said easy mode, quote, lightning in a bottle. Lightning in a bottle. Oh, so is this, wait, like an Elkin bottle or just like, oh, it's... Like it's a lightning dark. bolt in a bottle. Oh, it's a lightning bolt like in a bottle. Two like two mana artifact, two tap, deal three damage to dark creature or player. Lightning in a bottle. Bam. Wait, and you can just keep using that? No, no, oh, no, you, you no say sacrifice? you sacrifice it. You Ooh, sacrifice it. Gavin, that's a card. <laughs> Jeez, my goodness. No, yeah, no, that, that, that's Chris, just, Chris Scroll, move over. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's just uh, alchemy of dragon fire, but for three damage instead of two? I don't know. Maybe it should have another mana somewhere or something, but I guess it should be one to activate, right? It's so like three to cast, one to activate. Three to cast, one to activate. Deal three to something. Deal three to something. You know, I, one of the things I... I and sacrifice. Of, it, oh, and sacrifice. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's totally a fine uh, representation. One of the things that made me think about sort of like, oh, like this bottle breaks open and maybe the maybe there's like this random element to the lightning being released, right? <laughs> of like, oh, Deals you know, three to a random uh, target at random. Yeah, like, you know, something like three to play, three tap, three damage to a random target. Right, where you're just like, okay, are you just going to, uh, you know, be releasing this? Although, you know, then of course it wouldn't sack because that way you could just be doing that over and over again. <laughs> I, I could also, I could also imagine a fun design. I like that one, Mike. I could imagine a fun design too. That's just like one mana artifact. When this artifact dies, deal three damage, but doesn't have a way to kill it on its own. So there's this fun little mini game of like, ooh, how do I get this thing to die? Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I really like that about cards that are like, oh, when you. When you find a way to get rid of me, then I'll do my thing. But you know that's kind of this like this tricky design where we expect new players to read it to sort of just be like, what does this even mean? Like, what is it like? Where you know one of the great things about Magic is there's so many combos and so many ways to make cards work together that uh, you know using this in KCI or something, you're just like, oh, and I'm, I'm dealing some damage too while, right. while I'm out it. I mean, you right? could, it's good in Ravager Affinity. You could always put a uh, like a seven mana activated ability to sacrifice it on there, like seven mana tap sack, draw a card or whatever, right? Right. A Ember shot. Right. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Our, oh, next one, shot, yeah. our next one comes from our, our director, Dan May, and I'm sure he's making this specifically for director Kyle West. A blue and or black mill spell with flashback or jump start. Wait, so a blue, black, blue or black? Blue and or black. Oh. You know, we were, I was always super surprised. Well, I wasn't that surprised, but it was <laughs> it was super awesome to see how much people loved UB Mill 10. Oh, yeah, and, Glimpsy Unthinkable. Yeah, Glimpsy Unthinkable. Yeah, that to me, that was just, like, uh, so amazing. I actually saw someone playing it uh, just this weekend, right? It just like It's just kind of fun to just be, like, it's basically the the mill player's equivalent of Mountain Bolt You, right? <laughs> is I believe is some a, I saw something online too that said you really missed an opportunity with the most recent set to make a glimpse the thinkable, two mana <laughs> surveil ten or something ridiculous <laughs> like that. Surveil ten sounds pretty miserable. <laughs> it does sound miserable. Yeah, that, that sounds that sounds pretty good with Delve. Um, so okay, so we're making a blue or black. Mill card with it, jumpstart with, or flashback. With jumpstart or flashback. Well, I think the most fun version of this is probably going to be blue and black, and probably not have jumpstart then because that's is its thing. Uh, yes. So blue right. black card with flashback. Blue black card. So, yeah, that that sounds. So, do you think it should just be a straight mill card, or do you think that you know, like sometimes in blue black we do uh, mill until you until they flip four lands. Right, grind. Right. right. Yeah, more more of a grindy. Thing, right, like I mean, to me, uh, uh, was it Telemann's performance? I think oh, yeah. was uh, right. That's a super fun. Um, it, it mills them. You get a creature. Uh, so I, I, I kind of like that. Maybe maybe it should like mill them until you hit a instant or sorcery. That's what I was gonna say. Really? Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Parallel design. Boom. And then yeah. And so that way, I mean, that's you know, I really like those cards that use the players. Deck 
against them, right? And as a blue-black mill player, I think that's just something that, you know, really motivates you of like, you know, watching those cards flip off their deck and you really care, right? You're, you're really into it. And then it makes them care too. Right, and th the cool thing is it's different against different opponents, right? You, like, I play one match, play it in the next match, it does totally different things. Totally savage in the mirror match, by the way, right? Just, like, hit theirs and cast it again on them and just keep on going. Right, yeah, it just, yeah, it just keep, uh, keep flipping up. And it is flashback, I guess. Um, it, now, it's not really doing anything unique with the flashback, I guess it just has flashback. Yeah, it could have flashback, or you could have an alternate, uh, right, an alternate cost, or paying life, or, uh, right? I mean, there, there's ways to uh, mix up flashback, Often we just go with straight mana cost, though. So what do you think this costs mana-wise? Like a four mana spell on the front side? Man, that sounds pretty good. Four mana to... Right, like Telemann's performance costs five. Yeah. Although typically flipping an instant or sorcery would, I'd expect to be worse yeah. than flipping a creature. And this is gold, too. You know, two UB. Yeah, so two... Although it does flashback, so... Two UB, sorcery. Right, this definitely sounds like a yeah, sorcery. Yeah, definitely sorcery. Right. Uh, mill an opponent until they hit an instant or sorcery. You may cast that card without play paying its casting cost. Uh, and then, what do you think the flashback should be? Well, uh, interestingly, I might consider making this an instant if it didn't have flashback, um, just because it could be fun to have to try, try hit a combat trick or removal spell out of their deck. But yeah. flashback instants we have to be so careful with because you just forget they're in your opponent's graveyard, and then they cast it, and it feels horrible for everyone. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely flashback was leading me towards sorcery. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you make this one pretty pricey, like seven mana to flashback. I mean, you're getting a, a full card out of it, so. Yeah, I think that's a pretty that's a pretty fun card. You know, once again, it depends on where we'd end up. Like, depending on the limited environment, I could see this being an uncommon or being a rare. And then, to me, that would sort of tweak that flashback number uh, accordingly. Yeah, so, something like that. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. That all sounds right. like a fun card. I think that about wraps, wraps it up for today, then. Uh, thank you all so much for coming out to our Designing the Magic the Gathering Cards live panel. Time to, time to put these into magic sets, Mike. Yeah, that's, that's right. Sweet I've, cards been, today. I've been taking notes, and when you see these cards in 24 months to three years, <laughs> you, you'll know it's starting here today. Yeah. Thank you to Mike and Gavin, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your SCG Con. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you.